Hey everybody, Mike DeAndre here, famed author Napoleon Hill once identified the six fears that we experience as human beings. Poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. Today, the narrative in the news place. I wasn't watching the news. Is that there are six great fears in today's stock market. And so I want to take a moment take you through all six and move away from the narrative and move into the data so we can see what's actually happening. So let's jump in. The six great fears in today's market, the debt ceiling, inflation, bank crashes, rising interest rates, the AI bubble, and recession. If we address first the debt ceiling, we look at, well, why should we be afraid at all? Biden just signed the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Say what? To end the debt limit crisis for at least the next two years. So let's go ahead and take the debt ceiling off our list of things that we should be fearful of today. We can add it to the list of things to be fearful of tomorrow or in two years. So let's move on to inflation. This chart goes back to uh, 1915. 1915. Okay, okay, I get the picture. We see a peak here in 21. We see a peak in 47, a peak in 1980, and then this peak that we're going through right now in 22. We trace back 41 years before we are in an inflation situation similar to what we have been in. But let's carefully look at what the trend in inflation is right now. And right now, the trend in inflation is down. Downward trends in inflation are typically good for stocks. So while we are still working through inflation, the trend is down and that's a positive thing. So let's take a look at the 10 year treasury yield. Looking back over 40 years, we can see the trend is down and to the right until we get to COVID. When we see that the yield crater and then zoom right back up. And now we're in this situation where the speed at which rates have moved is almost worse than where rates are in actuality. This movement has been disruptive to say the least, but let's take a look and see where we are right now. And things have sort of calmed and stabilized a little bit. We had two big moves a move in 21 and then early 22. And we can see that rate of change just continues to come down on the 10 year yield. And that's been a good thing. But this sort of sideways channel here hasn't gotten in the way of a rally in growth stocks. Is this a problem? Is this a major fear in the market? No. Rising rates for today seem to be under control. Bank crashes. Here is a chart of the regional banking index, or as I like to call it, the index of stocks you've never heard of until one of them goes bust. And earlier this year, three of them went bust. That brought, of course, the entire sector down. But it looks like there's a little bit of life. We've had a kind of foot in the ground here in a pivot in this index. And I think if we take a step back in the banking space, we can take some comfort in seeing that the larger banks, this is just the Dow Jones US Bank Index. So this includes banks you've heard of and banks you haven't heard of. There seems to be a bit of a more definitive bottom. bottom in those stocks and they're making their way. If we even take another step out into the entire financial sector, this index is only made up of about 25% banks. We're out, it looks like, of the basement. So not so bad field position given where we've been. So bank crashes can't be the thing that's keeping us up at night today. AI bubble. So here is a Google Trends uh, analysis of the search term artificial intelligence going back over five years. And as you can see, it is predominantly really taken off here in 2022. There's been some some new developments, some new interest in this space. Is this a bubble or does this have legs? What's this ultimately going to be? When we see that level of interest, it, it reminds us of the bubble in gold, the bubble in Japan stocks, the internet bubble, the housing bubble, the China bubble, the biotech bubble. Where is this ultimately going to take us? Now, as you can see, let me clear off these, these things here. This AI bubble, it, it barely, it's just a cute little bubble. A bubble? A bubble. Of AI stocks. Not, not anything even close to being um, considered a bubble yet. Not yet. But let's again look into the data and see what's that telling us about whether this is a bubble or not. And the, one of the first things I'd expect to see on the semiconductor index itself, you'd expect to see a breakout here. You'd expect to see a long stem. We don't have it yet. We don't even have a uh, breakout from the 21 highs. So I would consider taking AI bubble off the list of the great fears in today's market. Now let's talk recession. Let's just look at the data. This comes right from the Federal Reserve. This is the Smooth U.S. Recession Probabilities Index. If we are above 10, pretty good chance we're either in it or very, very close to being in a recession. Right now, we're hovering around the zero line. Zip, zero, zilch. Doesn't look like there's anything to confirm that we are in recession or that we're imminently close to recession. The real-time sham rule recession indicator. We're looking here, it's got to get over 0.5. We're sitting here around zero. And you can see it's got a reasonable 
uh, uh, history of indicating that you know we're in recession or that we're very near recession. But this doesn't appear to show us um, any such confirmation. Even Goldman Sachs has recently come out and lowered their expectation forward-looking of a recession. Doesn't mean one's not going to come, just means it's not here right now. If that's the case, then how we should be positioning our portfolios should not be concerned about recessions. So what are we looking at going forward? We are looking very carefully at the areas that are doing the best. Right now it's technology, communication services, consumer discretionary and industrial. I would like to see some greater participation out of the bottom two thirds of the US sectors, but go where the money is. <laughs> Frankly, that's that's uh, that's in these top sectors until it's not. And when it's not, we'll rotate back into the strongest sectors. We have our game plan. It is not built on fear. It's not built on what a market commentator is going to tell us. It is not built on anything other than the charts that are in front of us and how we can align ourselves with those charts. So I wish you the very best. Enjoy your summer as we go through. Know that if you're a client of ours, we've got your back. If you'd like to learn more about us, our contact information is in the description or in the email or in the text or wherever you found this and uh, wish you a happy rest of the summer. Take care.